I will shift the, the scope of uh, of the of this of this topic, and we'll share with you some of the uh, of the main uh, of the main drivers in uh, in Europe. Um, first of all, uh, my name is Aida Tula. I am senior manager of the uh, VAS unit at the Knowledge and Innovation Department at UITP. Uh, for those who don't know UITP yet, UITP is the International Association of Public Transport. And uh, our mission is to enhance uh, quality of life and economic well-being by promoting uh, and supporting uh, sustainable, clean uh, uh, public transport in cities. Uh, we have uh, about uh, yeah, 1,800 member companies uh, from 100 different countries and regional offices. And definitely, uh, we rely a lot on the uh, extensive network of stakeholders we, we put together in our membership. We have uh, public transport authorities, operators, but also the uh, industry uh, chain, uh, research, uh, et cetera. So we are proud of being quite diverse in this sense. Uh, activities we cover logically you know, first uh, advocacy, we promote uh, all the benefits uh, of public transport and we try to keep it at the top of the policy agendas, we of course uh, network uh, to different activities with uh, with our members and other organizations. I think that's also the value you know, of uh, of, uh, of projects like like uh, Solutions Plus. We are we are uh, in, in the right framework today, and definitely also you not know, promoting the creation and elicitation of knowledge, not just uh, through research and innovation projects, but also different activities in this sense. First, perhaps to start with, uh, yeah, with a bit more of a meta level uh, look, um, we face all no, global challenges, but these challenges are also opportunities which for me translate into the right drivers when we identify them in the proper way. Um, the need for, for clean buses is something that we have seen uh, already in the last uh, decades. Uh, there is not just uh, yeah, big issues in cities, especially in densely populated cities, we have the example of, of Chinese cities. I think there, there is uh, definitely the good action and the good point of leverage has been has been set up already. We talk about climate change at the global level as a, as a planet, but we also face uh, local uh, urban pollution, congestion, definitely, and noise uh, in many cases. And also when we talk at the vehicle level, we also have the vibrations no, of the internal combustion engine buses. Uh, as, uh, as of today, still, no, urban transport in Europe represents, uh, yeah, accounts for 40% of the CO2 emissions. This is, of course, uh, a number that we're trying to, to reduce. Uh, and you know that uh, at least uh, the European Commission has been releasing different actions and policies uh, with the purpose of, of uh, making uh, urban transport much more clean and sustainable. Um, Issue is that for the last decades, uh, diesel buses uh, account you not know, for the largest part of the urban bus fleets, and basically, the the yeah the speed of uh, yeah the fleet renewal is more or less uh, following the the cycle uh, the life the lifetime cycle of the uh, of the buses is eight ten years, so we have more or less eight percent of the bus fleet renewed every year. Of course. Um, this differs for different uh, operators, but basically that's an average we can consider. Um, this said, um, not just because of the of the policy set in place now, but also because uh, public transport operators in Europe have been really committed to to reduce uh, to reduce emissions and to contribute to this uh, to this increase of quality of life in cities. So. That's a priority. So removal is definitely a priority for the urban uh, bus stakeholders, and this, uh, this even considering that that might be some uh, some still for some of them, uh, because we have very good examples already of that best practices. But we still see there might be a bit of concerns about the technological maturity and the initial high uh, capex costs. No, when it comes to the to the implementation of clean buses. Still, one thing I, uh, I believe it's, uh, it's very important to keep always in mind is that uh, in order to make uh, public transport uh, thrive again, what we do need is to provide uh, high quality, excellent services, a seamless, uh, seamless uh, offer of, um, of public transport. 
that is able to 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 attract you know, to make uh, to make uh, people choose uh, public transport over private modes and for this especially now when we talk about the starting post pandemic period i think it's a really a key point to to bear in mind when we when we start designing how to build back better um, let me just um, yeah, share with you some of the local, I call it local challenges, because each operator in each city is dealing with this uh, um, in, in a specific way. Um, what we have seen during this pandemic, and it, this is a global effect, it's not just a, a regional effect, is that we have uh, a drastic uh, reduction of the ridership and with it the revenues um, of, uh, of, uh, bus, uh, of bus operators. This, of course, poses the question, what happens now when we have uh, plans for uh, fleet renewal? Uh, what happens if my revenues, of course, have decreased that dramatically? Now we can talk more or less about a recovery uh, of a maximum levels of 80% of the ridership compared with the 2019 pre-pandemic uh, uh, levels. Basically, if we consider that one of the first, uh, one of the first, uh, uh, investments you will have to, to face is, for instance, the depot upgrade, meaning you need to convert your depot to the needs of the new technology introduced, charging infrastructure considered, but also perhaps you need an increased surface to be able to allocate the charging infrastructure plus um, a, a higher number of buses if needed no? for, for your operation with a specific technology. These are things that uh, need to be considered. Also, uh, in order to make this possible, uh, there is a need of, of uh, yeah, finding uh, appropriate uh, funding and uh, financing mechanisms. No, also, in order to to have the right business models that can make that this um, that this share of the technology technological risk and 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 the uh, associated uh, investment costs are fairly distributed. We have seen examples how, for, for instance. Uh, the uh, the innovation innovative business model of, of Shenzhen uh, and uh, many other Chinese cities, no, as presented by our colleague from ITDP. Also, we see this in Latin America, no. Uh, uh, in the example of Santiago de Chile, for instance, it's, it's very it's very inspiring in this sense. So, if we focus now, what happens uh, next? Basically, uh, what I would like to highlight is that instead of Posing a challenge, um, what clean bus technologies and the introduction, or let's say the the push from from the governments to to support and introduce uh, clean bus technologies in uh, in bus fleets today is a golden opportunity, definitely. So we have the chance to be able to uh, give a new face to what uh, the bus to what bus systems are in our cities. Because that's an in, uh, we are introducing an innovation which is bringing more comfort and environmental friendliness, not to the uh, to the transporting in in the city. Also, considering that that's the reality that we have um, that we, we have experienced during the pandemic. So, fear of uh, or even some governments not from uh, telling their their citizens avoid public transport. Now we need to slowly you know, gain the, 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 the pace back and be able to uh, to give our, our passengers uh, the trust back on a safe and reliable public transport. So that's uh, the challenge we, we face at the operational level. Uh, and the good news is that we have seen an amazing uh, leadership by cities, by cities around Europe, by cities also around the world. Uh, which show that these these uh, these stakeholders now are the main the main uh, the main actors of the uh, of the transition of the energy transition we need to see around in Europe. So um, we have seen that there is many many actions, but basically what we see is that there is uh, a policy framework set in Europe. I will present you in the next slide. But we have uh, cities that have. Uh, Let's say topped the, uh, the targets established by these uh, by these policies and have gone even beyond these targets. We have examples uh, like Hamburg, Paris, Amsterdam, but also Moscow. 
for instance, some of these cities, they have uh, decided not to purchase any diesel bus anymore as of 2020 or 2021, and they have increased the number of, uh, of uh, battery electric buses in this case. Also, sometimes in the case of Paris, it's also CNG buses, natural gas buses. But um, yeah, the, the, good, the good path is, is under go, definitely. And for instance, we have uh, already six, um, six uh, countries in, in, in Western Europe that have introduced in total no, uh, over 25% uh, of the new registrations of 2020 with uh, battery electric and fuel cell buses. That's fantastic news. And most of the drivers we see for this is of course not only uh, the national and the, in some cases the regional legislation, but also of course the, uh, the European, no? the European uh, Union legislation and even uh, so, uh, supranational levels like uh, yeah, Paris Agreement, etc. cetera. So um, this said, um, what we need uh, every time no? to, to, keep, uh, to keep in mind is, is, is the need of, of having the stakeholders bundled together. So when we have, uh, when we have uh, a, a new fleet renewal exercise, uh, the cooperation and uh, to create the solid uh, uh, joint work with, uh, with all stakeholders is key. And this is uh, shown by the innovation, innovative business models that we have, uh, that we have uh, commented uh, before. So what is the role of policy? So basically, of course, we see uh, that this, uh, the purpose, the main purpose is to boost the, uh, the introduction or, or the penetration in the market of, of these technologies. And we see that, uh, yeah, this is some examples of what is happening in Europe, but as I mentioned before, it's uh, basically policies uh, on decarbonization and clean technologies. Not that are pushing both, are encouraging both, not just uh, the market, but also the cities, cities towards uh, clean buses and clean bus fleets. We have the Paris Agreement, which is so we know that this is, is uh, the global transition towards a low carbon economy. It's not just relating to e-buses, but it's in general how to uh, keep uh, how to keep. Uh, our our temperature uh, rise below the two degrees. Also, we do have the uh, e EU Green Deal, but also alternative fuel uh, infrastructure directive, the clean vehicle directive. I will present you in the next slide. But also, we do have national policies. Uh, I wanted to mention here the example of the Netherlands, which has committed already to uh, the transition to 100% zero emission buses until 2025. Um, this uh, means, for instance, that in the procurement, in the concession contracts that are launched by the different uh, regional authorities, the transport authorities, only um, only zero emission buses are uh, are accepted. This is a requirement in the, in the concessions. No, um, this uh, this definitely means that when we uh, push for zero emission and low emission, no, which is the purpose of the Clean Vehicle Directive. We can we can introduce uh, this uh, this uh, we can bring these benefits closer to the citizens and at the same time you promote and strength innovation and competitiveness of the industry. And I think it's very interesting to see how in many in many of the examples we saw also in in Seoul and and in China we have seen that uh, the existence of the local industry manufacturing at the local level uh, buses is bringing the sector no, is bringing the introduction of this technology um, at, a, at a better at a better pace. Um, again, for this reason, for me, rather than a challenge, uh, clean technologies and this legislation pushing for the introduction of clean technologies is definitely a, an opportunity uh, the bus sector is, uh, is, is sizing. Uh, first, to rethink, to redesign the system, to optimize perhaps your bus network, uh, to uh, upgrade specific parts of, uh, of your operation, etc. So what we have seen is that at this level, and having also seen that we face the, the still end pandemic, post pandemic period, we have seen that many cities, they do have the political will, but might lack of the capabilities no? and the know-how. And um, also that even if uh, the, a, a clear setting, a, a clear um, target setting is, is necessary, 
uh, even when you have your uh, immobility strategy, you need you know, some support to, to bring it forward. Let me give you just a brief look what is the uh, Clean Vehicle Directive. This is, um, this is so for me, the main, the main uh, regulation in Europe right now uh, driving the transition to, to low emission and zero emission uh, bus fleets. So what we see here is that we have um, uh, mandatory quotas for public procurement. This means that as, um, as, uh, as from the uh, inter, uh, entering into force of this, um, of this directive, which was August this year, and until the end of 2025, we have different quotas for newly procured bus. This means that each uh, newly uh, procured bus needs to comply with these targets. We have a first period of five years for this until the end of 2025. And uh, from 2026 to the end of 2030, we have the different quotas. You can see the first uh, period uh, is, is set in a target of 45% of clean uh, emission, uh, you, sorry, clean technologies, and uh, the half of it, 22.5%, should be zero emission technologies. Now the question is, uh, what is clean? What is clean and what is zero emission? So I, I, um, I can show you this in the left, uh, on the left side of the slide. A clean bus is fueled by electricity, hydrogen, also natural gas, both compressed natural and liquefied natural gas, also most uh, biofuels, but also uh, synthetic and paraffinic, uh, paraffinic fuels and LPG. And very important, zero emission at the tailpipe. Bus is a vehicle either without an internal combustion engine or with an internal combustion engine, but emitting less than one gram of CO2 per kilowatt hour or kilometer. This said, uh, these targets are, uh, are set for uh, the, the European uh, Union member states, you can see on the right side. Uh, lower targets apply for uh, for the rest of the uh, of the member states. These targets were also set and, and calculated based on uh, on different parameters like uh, population density, GDP, uh, etc. So this uh, this policy framework this is in the frame of the European Commission Clean Bus Deployment Initiative. This initiative uh, is setting, uh, as I say here, not the right policy uh, framework for kicking uh, and, and boosting the introduction of clean technologies in Europe. It's, um, it's already a long uh, way with, uh, with, the, uh, with the development and the, uh, and the launch of, of, this, uh, of this initiative uh, in 2017. And um, it's, it has three elements I will present you in the next slide, but basically what what the Commission saw and uh, what we as UATP definitely also understand is that there is three elements for the scale up of, uh, of, elect, uh, of electric buses in the case of this, uh, of this training today, but in general, a clean buses, no? We need, uh, we need a right, the right policy framework, which is already in place through the directive and other, other directives that apply, but basically this is the one uh, which is really kicking and pushing for, for uh, concrete number of, uh, in, of uh, clean buses introduced in, in the fleets. We need a financial funding, uh, funding framework, and also we need the exchange of best practice and knowledge. And this part is exactly what, uh, what is uh, tackled you know, by, by the project I will present you in the next slides, which is called the Clean Bus Europe Platform. With the Clean Bus Europe Platform, what the, uh, what the European Commission has done is to create the tool. This is a strategic line of, of action, which is supporting the implementation of the Clean Vehicle Directive, meaning helping operators and authority cities to comply with the, set, with the target sets by the, uh, by the directive. And at the same time, boosting from uh, a wider perspective what is uh, clean uh, bus deployment in member states. These three pillars I mentioned before is this. First of all, a, a declaration you know, endorsing uh, the common ambition of uh, not just the industry, but of course the main actors, the cities, to accelerate this rollout of clean buses, the creating a deployment platform. This is the project I mentioned, the Clean Bus Europe platform, which is of course the place to be you know, for, for the public authorities, the transport operators, 
the whole industry uh, chain plus financial and funding uh, organization in order to exchange information, in order to uh, support each other, uh, matching supply and demand. In the case of the industry and the funding and financing uh, organizations, and of course, no, being able to uh, create in this sense the uh, the necessary uh, investment and leverage uh, the investment in this sense, no. Additionally, it also uh, foresees the creation of an expert group which will be monitoring and following up these uh, these developments, and that's the project. So what it's uh, put in, in a sentence, what uh, the Clean Basura platform is doing is really accelerating the introduction and creating you know, the, 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 the large speed upscale uh, that we need uh, in Europe worldwide, definitely, but focusing in Europe uh, today. So uh, as I said before, electrification needs of the cooperation of uh, all involved partners and this is uh, this is the, one of the main goals of the platform, bringing together these uh, these players uh, to exchange knowledge and expertise. Also, the project provides technical support, meaning if a city and operator uh, needs uh, to deploy uh, still uh, an immobility strategy, the project foresees technical support through a local uh, expert network. For these, but at the same time, when it comes to the tendering phase, to do the, does the does the city or the transport authority need support to to develop some specifications to define the specifications? There is also a local um, experts uh, already ready for that. Uh, and as I said before, to uh, so, uh, to match the supply and demand, meaning through the uh, through uh, dialogue sessions, marketplaces, not with uh, with uh, funding and financing institutions, but also with uh, with the industry. What uh, what is available on the market when I want to purchase an electric bus? There are many manufacturers. So what can I what can I uh, get uh, in the market? The same for for the funding and financing. No? Technologies uh, that are focused uh, in the project is uh, battery electric plug-in hybrid, natural gas, but also hydrogen, uh, fuel cell hydrogen, and IMC trolley buses, in motion charging battery trolley buses. These technologies refer, of course, to the technologies we saw before uh, in, the, in the Clean Vehicle Directive. Uh, briefly, main pillars we have in the project. The first, of course, capacity building and knowledge transfer to the different activities I will show you in the next slide technical support and facilitation. We also have a look to the social dialogue on the impacts on the workforce, meaning what happens when we introduce uh, clean technologies. Uh, we talked before about depot upgrades. We also know that we need to train uh, our staff, uh, maintenance staff, for instance, in safety uh, regulations, how to handle well with this, uh, with this new, uh, with these new uh, buses. Plus, for instance, uh, also trainings for drivers, how to make the best of the battery. We saw some uh, interesting numbers shared by, by our colleague before uh, with this uh, about the Asians and um, energy consumption you know, buses. So uh, basically, there is, um, there is a need also to understand how to make these transitions for the staff uh, uh, sustainable and acceptable. And of course, we also monitor what is the deployment, not just along the project, but um, in the European market. These are the activities that we cover in the project for uh, capacity building and all its exchange, of course, to our basic is uh, classic is the webinars. We also organize study tours, uh, meaning study tours to experienced cities. So you have seen um, in the in the map before. Uh, also the marketplaces, as I mentioned, the technical support. We create also a lot of different uh, project uh, outputs uh, in the coming from uh, from the different workshops, from the webinars, from the technical visits, etc. And all this will be available uh, in the Climbus Toolkit section of the website that you can uh, you can see here. Interesting, I think, for anyone interested in uh, in eBus deployment, not only Climbus deployment in Europe, is to have a look to. To this section specifically, because first we do have a uh, market monitoring going on. This means uh, we are following and, and, and showing data about uh, 
the tenders, orders, and buses in service. And this we do in cooperation with uh, different organizations like Sustainable Bus Magazine. And also the library section, which will uh, provide you different material. Different material when, uh, yeah, when it comes to eBus deployment, for instance, interactive tools for planning or webinars run in the project, but also um, interesting webinars we have been uh, a part of, etc. As I said before, uh, the results of the study visits, etc., will be also there. And I think that's everything from my side. 